Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to use GarageBand to create your very own audio loops. And uh, if you have GarageBand and were interested in utilizing uh, whatever audio files you might have on your computer or whatever you grabbed off the internet and use them as loops within GarageBand, um, this tutorial can help you out. I started doing this because I wanted to create audio loops that I can export from GarageBand and import them into a looper pedal for guitar practice. I found that uh, using audio loops uh, just randomly and willy-nilly created syncing problems with my looper pedal's internal uh, BPM clock. So I wanted to find a way on how to ensure that the files that I created are going to uh, be um, perfectly formatted for my pedal. And I found that GarageBand is very helpful for using that. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab an audio file that uh, I want to convert. You can use whatever audio file you want. I'm going to use this WAV file right here. So you'll need to copy the file and then paste it into GarageBand. By default, GarageBand projects start at 120 beats per minute. And we have no idea what the beat per, uh, per minute of the audio file is. So I'll show you how to figure that out. Uh, right now, let's just go ahead and, and listen to this file and see what it sounds like. It's just a one measure audio file, but you can see already that it doesn't align with the one measure marker. It doesn't really align with the two measure marker either. So this file is going to need some work in order for it to play nicely and sync up nicely. As it stands right now, if I attempted to use this, I'm going to run into into uh, syncing issues uh, really bad. So if we were to take this file and examine it closer, uh, if you don't have this screen up right here, you can click the scissor icon, which will bring it up, and you'll be able to examine the file closer. This slider to the right hand side right here will allow you to size and resize and we can see right now that it's extending over the two measure marker by a bit and the first thing that I'm gonna try to do is play around with the current tempo to get it to get this file to shrink down to the one measure marker I'm gonna drop it down sliding it down all right so right around the 90 90 uh, beats per minute it looks like it lines up nicely let's give this a play um, before we do that why don't we go ahead and highlight this section here so that it loops up and will repeat itself as a loop Let's give this a listen. I'm going to click the metronome mark, uh, the metronome icon here, and see if it uh, sounds good with the metronome. When it sounds really good and if it's in 
really good sync, the metronome will almost disappear into the beat or become a part of it. You, you really can't tell, but uh, if it's really out of sync, you will definitely hear the metronome in the odd off beats here, and it, it'll just sound really bad. Now, another way we can double check if this is a good loop or not is by going up to File, then Add Region to Loop Library, and with these options right here, you have the option of loop or one shot. If the loop was not a nice clean loop, then this loop, uh, I this loop option right here would be grayed out. You wouldn't be able to select it. Only one shot would be selectable, and one shot is a type of loop that you just hit one time. It plays through. It does not loop back around again. Um, a loop um, by nature is going to just constantly repeat itself. Uh, I don't think I need to explain that anymore. Um, but it just creates a problem if that loop is created and is not in sync. But so far, GarageBand is smart enough to know if a loop is syncable, uh, and it gave me the option to be able to save this as a loop. So right now, this is good to go. If I wanted to create it, I could and it would be added to our loop library. So now that you do have a, a good loop, uh, well, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and, and save it as a loop so I can show you something here. Uh, if you don't save it as a loop, say I wanted to play around with the tempo again, I'll show you what happens. If I want to jump this up, let, let's say, 120. You can see right now it's no longer fitting within those measures anymore. It's growing. Um, and so the beats per minute is is going to be, you know, moving, 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 but the file itself doesn't move. It's going to stay at the, the same tempo it was originally recorded at. So by saving it as a loop, you're going to make it be able to grow or, or stretch along with the tempo. So let's bring this back down to where we had it. Uh, we found it to be at 90. And then we're going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to call this uh, Cajon Slow Rock. Now, one important thing to note is that uh, if you're f if after playing around with the tempo and you still don't have a file that lines up neatly, you're going to have to do some trimming, and sometimes uh, you might even have to like cut a section out. Like for for instance, you would have to uh, do the control where you split uh, the file and then maybe get rid of it by deleting that section, then maybe even, you know, moving things around like this a bit more, getting them to line up. Um, I was fortunate that uh, my audio file was close enough to, to fit within those parameters to be accepted as a Apple loop. So I don't have to do that. And let me undo everything that I just did here. All right, and now um, we have already saved a file. Uh, we have to refresh my loop library here. Go back into my loops, and there it is, uh, Cajon Slow Rock 2. Now, it's important to use the loop file because... It's important to use the loop file that you created instead of the audio file because the loop file will grow. So I'm going to get rid of this. Let's put this back up here. Let's get rid of 
All right, so now, as I move the tempo up and down, this audio file will stay in sync. I'm going to jack it up to one, let's go all the way up to 160. Now notice the file didn't grow. It stayed exactly the same. The measurement markers are still in alignment. And let's see what this sounds like. Get rid of the metronome. If I put the metronome on, it should still stay in time. All right, so it's a good loop. Um, now you can export this loop however you want. Uh, use it in whatever DAW you want or whatever project that you're working on. Um, in my case, I'm going to be exporting it to my looper pedal. And the way you do that is by clicking Share. And then Export Song to Disk. And then you name it using whatever conventions that uh, your, you need to name it. Um, my looper pedal is an electroharmonics 22500 stereo looper, and all of the audio files um, stored on its uh, SD card has to be stored with it within its own folder. Has to be uh, named track M, and. The file has to, it has to contain a text file that basically tells the looper how many beats per minute uh, is the audio file and how many measures. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that right now. Uh, so this is going to be track M. This is going to be saved. I don't think you need to see all this, really. <laughs> I think you got enough out of it. Um, and and also, just one final note, you can save it uh, or export it into whatever format that you need. Uh, I need to save it as a wave, as 16-bit. So this is what takes care of it for me. And um, hopefully, this is very helpful to you guys. And if you want to re-watch this and play a fun game, take a drink every time I say, um, uh, I apologize. I'm not a professional uh, demonstrator, or podcaster, or anything like that. So <laughs> uh, have, have fun on my account. Take care.